You won't catch me this time. <coughs> oh no, smoke. Whatever will I do? Now I have you. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to review Batman Beyond. So let's just start. So I rewatched the first two episodes from. Well, the very first two episodes, actually, from the beginning of the series, Rebirth Part 1 and 2, because they were the only episodes I had on DVD, and I didn't have any other episodes on DVD. The other episodes I saw a long time ago were on TV, and they were my they were good episodes, but the, my two favorite episodes of the entire series, and I say they're the best episodes of the, enti of the entire show, and that's the Rachel Go episode and the Mr. Freeze episode. Mostly the Mr. Freeze episode is more... Is more I like more because the Mr. Freeze episode was emotional and it got me really upset and felt bad for Mr. Freeze. And it was so w well written. It was beautiful. If you saw that episode, you know what I'm talking about. And if you saw my top 10 favorite comic book villains of all time, then you saw the clip. If you didn't, then go check out that video. Then go then come back to this video. So yeah. So yeah, the Mr. Freeze episode is actually the best episode of the entire series without a doubt. It's the most emotional, most impact, and most has most exciting moments, and actually made you make could make you cry. That episode made me cry. Like when Mr. Freeze says, "Believe me, you're the only one who cares." Like that uh, that line hit me. That made me feel bad for Mr. Freeze because we've been in his shoes like that. We felt like no one really cared for you. Like we've been to stuff like that. So that's why Mr. Freeze is a popular villain, and that's why. That episode means a lot to me, and that's why it's the best episode of the entire series, without a doubt. If you say it's the awful, an awful episode, I hate you. That is, the Mr. Freeze episode is obviously the best episode of the entire series, without a doubt. Okay, let's stop. Okay. So, let's talk about what I think. Is it, as, is it better than Batman the Animated Series? No. No. I Actually, it's equally as good as the Animated Series. Like, it's hard to say which one's better than the other, because they're both equally good. So... It's just as good as Batman the Animated Series, without a doubt, because it's basically made by the same people, and basically this is the best version of Batman, not Batman Beyond Batman the Animated Series, but honestly, this is this is a good take on Batman. This is the futuristic Batman. This inspired a lot of futuristic heroes, like, I think it inspired Spider-Man 2099. I could be wrong, but I don't know. Um, it did inspire the Spider-Man Unlimited show, and the Avengers United They Stand, and a few other future like superhero shows that I don't know about. But mostly Bound and Beyond was the best one and I love Bound and Beyond. I think it's a great show. I think it's my second favorite show of the DCAU. I say it's equally as good as Bound and the Anime series, but I do say it's better than Superman the Anime series. Mainly because I'm more of a Batman fan than a Superman fan, but Superman is in my top ten favorite superheroes of all time. But I don't think Superman's that as as interesting as Batman, obviously. I think a lot of people say Batman's better and a lot of people will say Superman's better, but I feel like most, the people who, like, watch my videos, you know, like, you guys, like, I think most of you are probably Superman fans or Batman fans, like, I know some of you are Superman fans, I know some of you are big Batman fans and big Superman fans, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, I do find Superman an interesting character, like, when I watch episodes of the I Made series, and where I read them in the comics with the Justice League and the Justice League show and Injustice, yes, Injustice, I find Superman an interesting character, even clips from the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, where I haven't, where I, which I haven't watched them. But I've seen clips of them, and it makes me into Superman a lot more. And especially the Justice League movie, take that what you will. But that got me into Superman, because Superman feels likable, and he feels really like Superman. And that actually made me close to a big Superman fan. So basically, I'm starting to become a huge Superman fan. But I may be a, close to a huge Superman fan, but I will never say he's better than Batman. Never. So, so far, this is my second favorite show, the DCAU. And it's one of the best ones. It's well written and it's actually impact and emotional and sad to see like to see like your say your favorite heroes like retire or they're dead. Like Joker, he's not even mentioned once in this show. Like that's why they made a full on movie about Joker. Which I'll review tomorrow. So I'll review Bound Beyond Return of the Joker tomorrow. So yeah, Bound Beyond is a great show, like I said. It's actually it's obviously the second best show in the DCAU. I said that multiple times, but I can't Ugh, these are just so good shows, like, so how about I just give my final rating for the show, Batman Beyond is a 10 out of 10, it's obviously a 10 out of 10, obviously a 10 out of 10, it's obviously a 10 out of 10, without a doubt, I mean, 
This is the DCMA universe. I know every time I review something the DCAU related, like, like everything I've done, like, I always gave it a 10 out of 10 because they are so well written. It's like, because these, these are the definitive versions of these characters outside of the comics. Because these characters are so well written, they're likable, and they're basically the characters, like, these are like the comics. These are the, these are characters outside the comics. Like, this is everything we wanted. This is stuff we want to see. This is actually sh what the DCEU should have been. I actually want a DC Cinematic Universe that feels like the, a live-action version of the animated universe. Like, how does a cartoon DC Universe get the characters right, but, but a cinematic universe does not? That doesn't make any sense, but the animated universe is way better, obviously. And if that was a cinematic universe, it would be the best thing ever. And Marvel would probably be screwed if, the, if they made their movies like that. So yeah, Bad and Beyond's a 10 out of 10. And what, but I'm not ending the video yet. How about, hey, okay. I want a Bad and Beyond video game and a Bad and Beyond movie. A live action Bad and Beyond movie. And yes, we had a Bad and Beyond video game, Bad and Beyond Return of the Joker video game, but that game was horrible is what I've heard, and it's not a free roam game. I want a free roam Bad and Beyond game where we get to explore the futuristic world because that'd be awesome. Like, I'm sure some of you want to see a Bad and Beyond video game because... Are you guys, like, tired of getting the same Batman game over and over, like, just have Bruce Wayne? I'm not saying you should, we should get, we should, or, we shouldn't get any more Batman games that's Bruce Wayne, but let's try something. They, if you want to try something fresh and original, do a Batman Beyond video game. Of course, we had some in the past, but they weren't good. Do a free roam Batman Beyond video game, where some people will probably say, this is better than the Arkham game. Like, you'll have probably some people say that, and you'll make lots of money. Same for a Batman Beyond movie. That'd be awesome. Like to see the explore the futuristic world. Like, like get a, what are you doing? Get, get a live action Batman Beyond movie and get a Batman Beyond video game. Like, that would make lots of money. Like, you probably will agree with me. A Batman Beyond, any Batman Beyond content will make lots of money. So yeah, Batman Beyond is a ten out of ten. And thank you guys for watching. And I'm out. Excelsior.